Oh god, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> Time to get sciency, historical, and just uh, bad. Well, buckle up because we're about to take a tour through time, space, and chaos. Where languages are born, die, and sometimes just mutate into something no one expected. Let's dive into a tangled web of how languages started, evolved, and how they've survived through wars, colonism, and history's general man. The first language, where it all began. Let's start at the very beginning because, well, we have to. The first human languages probably appeared about 100,000 years ago. Though, good luck finding any re reliable recordings back from back then. Spoiler, there aren't any. But you could try. These early languages were all spoken, no writing yet. So imagine cavemen grunting at each other and somehow managing to convey Pass the man off leg or watch out for that saber toothed tiger cat. Where? Most linguists agree that the earliest languages came out of Africa. Just like just like humans did, and then spread out as our ancestors got bored of their surroundings and decided to start wandering off. So if you've ever feeling lost while learning a language, remember, the human race has literally been lost for tens of thousands of years. Language families, welcome to the chaos. Now fast few now fast forward a few thousand years and languages start to evolve and breaking off into different families imagine a giant dysfunctional thanksgiving dinner where everyone speaks a slightly di um, different dialect and no one can agree on how to pronounce peak and pie that's basically how we ended up with language families in a european the big daddy of them all. This family gave birth to English, German, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Russian, and more. So if you speak any of these languages, congratulations. You're part of the linguistic chaos cup. Indo-European languages started around 4,500 to 6,000 years ago. Probably somewhere around the steps of more modern day ukraine or kazakhstan thank ancient nomads for spreading their language as they moved around looking for better grass for their sheep then there is a sino tibetan this family includes chinese and tibetan and it's older than your weird uncle's conspiracy theories ancient dating back over 6000 years and the chinese writing system is one of the old oldest continuously used systems in the world ever tried learning chinese it's like trying to decode hieroglyphs hieroglyphs but at least those characters have been around for a millennia so they've earned their right to confuse you I guess. Then there is Austroasiatic. Oh, that's a hard word to pronounce. Austroasiatic. Austroasiatic. Enter Thai. The Thai language, along with Lao, belongs to the Kra, Kra, um, Kra Dai family, a subset of um, Austroasiatic languages. Thai dates back about 700 years, and it's been chilling in Thailand since around the 13th century. Surviving wars, coloni colonialism, colonialism, and now foreign tourists trying to say Sawadee 
without sounding like they're ordering something off a menu. Then we have Germanic. <laughs> German. The language that sounds like you're assembling, you're angrily assembling IKEA furniture. It comes from the Germanic branch of Indo European. And it's been around for some time, from like forms, in some forms since about the second century. German, Germany, where it's the dominant language, wasn't even a country until 1871. Before that, everyone just spoke German while going to war with each other. Times. Then, Romance languages. These come from Latin because nothing says like long lasting like the language of a dead empire, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. All of these trace their roots back to the Romans, who spread their language by conquering half of the known world. Merci, Caesar. French gets fancy in France, where it's been the national language for over 1,000 years. Meanwhile, Spanish is in Spain, where it became dominant after centuries of, you guessed it, war, invasion, and reconquer and reconquest. Spanish didn't stay in Europe, though, thanks to colonialism. Colonialism. It's now spoken in Latin America, where 20 countries claim it as their official language to say Hola Imperialismo. French. From Canada to France to France to Canada. I'm not sure. So let's talk about French. It started as the language of the Romans, morphed into Old French after some Gauls got their hands on it, and by the time of the French Revolution, it had settled into the language we know today. But French didn't stop in France. Nope, thanks to colonization and some good old-fashioned global expansion, French made it made its way to places like Canada, specifically Quebec, where people still speak French today. But with a twist, it's like French went to Canada, froze in the cold, and decided to say, we're forever. Bonjour de Barnac. Spanish, the language that took over. Spanish is the child of Latin, but it really became into its owner after Spain kicked out the Moors in Reconquista. Once Spain got rid of its internal invaders, they got bored and decided to take over the New World instead. Spanish sailed across the Atlantic with one with conquistadors with and priests, spreading the language all over Latin America. Like linguist. Linguistic wildfire nowadays. Linguistic wildfire, sorry. Ooh. Nowadays, Spanish is the official language of 20 countries, and they all argue about how to pronounce the word for strawberry fresa or fresa or frutilla. The debate rages on. Thai, where royalty speaks differently. Thai, or Pasat Thai, is a language with layers, like an onion, but more confusing. There's regular Thai, the kind you use to order street food, and then there's royal Thai, Ras Rasha Sap. Because why would the king need his own set of words? If you're ever lucky or unlucky enough to need to talk about the king's activities, don't just don't go say gin for eat. Use savoy. The king doesn't sleep either. He band home, band home. Different words for different people because you know 
Why make it simple? German, the angry language of philosophy and war. German is the language of philosophy and science, and well, two world wars. It's been around since, um, in some form, since the Roman Empire tried and failed to conquer the Germanic tribes. Germany was home to philosophers like Kant and Nietzsche, who pondered existence in words that have 30 lessons letters and sound like existential crisis then there's the dark part of history world war one and world war two where german was the language of let's just say not the most popular global activities but since then german has mellowed out and now exists mostly to help engineers philosophers and tourists trying to order beer The role of war and colonialism in language spread. Speaking of war and colonialism, these two lovely aspects of human history are the reason many languages are spoken far beyond their borders. Latin didn't just stay in Rome, it spread through conquest turning into French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and more. The British Empire, remember them, spread English so far and wide that now it's the, ling it's the lingua franca of business and travel even. Okay, even though it started as a mishmash of Germanic and Latin influences, it's in lingua franca. Why? Meanwhile, French and Spanish sailed out with their colonial ships and planted flags in places like Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Americas, where their languages still survive today. Ah, Col colonialism, ruining lives, spreading languages. Right. Conclusion. Languages live, die, and mutate. So there you have it. The history of languages, born out of necess necessity, spread through war and colonialism. I got that right this time. And now living in a world where Duolingo reminds you to learn French or it'll haunt you in your dreams. Languages live. Languages die, and sometimes they mutate into something new like Spanglish or Franglish. Franglais. Part of the grand human experiment, where no one really knows what anyone's saying anymore, but we're all trying our best. And remember, languages have survived war, invasions, and empires collapsing. So if you mispronounce Boisson and Boisson in French, it's not the end of the world. Probably not, right?